Hey guys, welcome back to Angel Angela. And on today's topic, as you guys can see, we're going to be talking about the Narcissist Karma 2020. I wanted to drop this message, you know, to all of you um, to um, tell you guys that, you know, we're headed towards the right direction, but heading with, you know, heading to the right direction, there's going to be lots of turmoil, a lot of confusion, and a lot of revelations right now. Um, 2020, you guys, means perfect vision. Means that, you know, if you do not have 2020 vision, you know, if you wear glasses or contacts like me, you know, your vision is more of a 1420 vision. You don't have perfect vision. But going into the year 2020 we're going into a year of perfect vision perfect um a spiritual vision a spiritual awakening um that means that a lot of people who um did not know that the people around them were narcissists are starting to realize that there is something really wrong for centuries People were misdiagnosed. Some people didn't view narcissism as a problem. There's been a lot of control with, you know, um, narcissism with men, you know, for centuries, how they've controlled women. And a lot of times we have this illusion of true happiness and we believe that, hey, maybe if I lived in the old days, you know, I would be married and I would be, you know, I would have everything I want. Maybe if I was born in this time, you know, maybe you were born in that time. The times change, but the people are the same and the narcissism has been the same. Um, people are reliving their lives with this hate, this narcissism. That has not changed. But what will change for 2020 in this new millennium that we live in is that everyone will be aware of good and bad. For the last couple of years, you guys, we've been leading up to this very moment. We've been leading up to this very point um, where we're all starting to catch up and be aware with each other. Um, social media has ruined a lot of the dynamics of what we thought were supposed to be a family dynamic or a way of living life. With 2020 vision, we are realizing that we do not have to try to live our lives in this fairy tale story that does not exist. By us forcing ourselves to live a happily ever after, we are forcing ourselves to live our best nightmare. So we should never force anything. We should never force our relationships. We should never force people to care about us or to love us. You know, the more we show them that we do not need them to love us, that, that is going to be more of a reason for them to show us that they do. And if they, if they, and if they, do, if they leave, if they don't want to deal with you, let them leave. Let them go. Because that person was only part of your journey, but not part of your story. So as we're going into 2020, I know that a lot of us are feeling this energy shift. We're feeling um, the reality of life. We're seeing that nothing is what it seems. We're seeing that even the richest person can feel just like us on the inside because something is missing. The humanity is missing. You know, we are not free. You know how animals roam free? We're not free people. Even if we walk around or even when we're traveling to a whole nother country or going somewhere, we are not free people. We are not like the animals. We are not free. We are allowing other people to control our lives, to control everything we do. The control comes 
from narcissism. Everyone who is controlling someone, meaning if this person works for a big corporation and they're controlling a lot of people, if this person works for a small business, they're controlling people, they're firing people when they want because they're not their friends, they're taking relationships. These narcissists are um, judging people, even the people at the courthouse, they're judging people, giving these people life sentences for crimes sometimes that they didn't even commit. These people are judging people. They're narcissists. These people are incriminating um, good people. They're incriminating good people. These people are, um, you know, family members who are making you to be the black sheep, making you to be the bad person. Um, you know, in my case, I was treated like an adult as a kid. I was um, abused mentally. I had my hair cut off like a boy one time. And um, as an adult, um, at some point I had got like a short hairstyle and cut off my long hair and, and told by my narcissist, hey, look, you cut your hair like a bob, but you were angry at me when I cut off your hair when you were a kid. The difference between a bob and cutting your hair into a fade like a boy, that's a really big difference. Not only that, but as a child, I was told to tell other people who asked me about my hair, to tell them that I liked it, to tell them that that's what I wanted. Yet on my first day of school, I walked around with my arms around my head crying because I didn't want people to see me in class because I thought they were going to call me a boy. Narcissists, you guys, are people who damage or try to damage you. Um, people who um, do things to you, but somehow they're the victims. You cut off my hair, but yet you were the victim. I was a, a seven-year-old or eight-year-old child who wanted to have a short hairstyle because I came up with it. Until this day, she will still say, that I wanted that done to myself when I know that I did not. I know that she told me to tell everyone that I, 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 I wanted it done. She told me to say those things. So these narcissists, a lot of them do not change. And the ones that aren't changing, they're getting their karma constantly constantly getting their karma constantly getting their karma and coming into the year 2020 we're coming into a year where everyone is waking up you guys and it's a wonderful thing but it's scary too because we don't know what's going to happen something big is coming you know and with what i've been seeing is that a lot of people even in my family um Certain people, when I left, I was the black sheep. But when I decided to, you know, I'm an adult now. It's time for me to leave. When I decided those things for myself, they had to pick on someone new. So they went to the next person. And guess what? That next person they picked on, guess what they did? They couldn't take the shit that I took for years. You know, they took it for years, but they couldn't handle what I went through. And they came up to me and started talking to me about how sorry they were about what I went through, how sorry they, they were because they never were able to have eyes to see that it wasn't me, that it was them because they were so good at playing the church role. I'm a good Christian. I'm a good person. I help the homeless. I do this. I do that. It was hard for that person to see that I was actually the victim, not the person causing issues. Right after this person found out, you know, they started to get treated badly because they felt as if um, a lot of the family felt as if, why are you listening to basically me? Why are you listening to her? 
um, she's way younger than you. You're older than her. You should be the one, you know, why would you, you know, believe in what she's saying to you? She's younger than you. That's what they kept saying. Yet, that person was seeing everything play out exactly how I told her it would. I told her the things that they would say. I told her the things that they would do. Um, there was an incident where that person went to go talk to my grandmother, the lady who cut off my hair. And um, when she went to go speak with her, I was with her. And this was this was a in her in the beginning of her awakening. She didn't even know it was her awakening. I knew it was her awakening, but she didn't know yet. I knew because that moment I was there, I saw that demon in my grandmother as messed up as it sounds. But when we went over there and she basically poured her feelings out because she was going through something, um, my grandmother started to pretend as if she was going to fall on the floor. So my aunt, she's not doing anything. She's telling this woman that she's just hurt about how badly everyone's been treating her she even started crying and in the midst of her being so emotional my grandmother gets up and she starts walking and i see her legs kind of moving kind of like wiggling a little bit you get me and i tell my auntie i said she's gonna pretend like she's gonna fall and my auntie looked at me like, what are you talking about? And I looked at her again and I gave her the look like the eyes. And I said, she is going to pretend that she is going to fall down. Grab her. So my aunt grabs her arm and she goes, mom, please don't do this to me. Please don't do this to me. With tears in her eyes. And, I, and she goes, please don't fall down. Please don't fall down. You're okay, mom. You're okay to walk. You're okay. Don't pretend to fall down. So when we left that situation, I told my aunt, I said, I'm never coming back here again. You know, I already never talked to her. I'm never coming back here again. And she finally, for once, finally saw with her own two eyes, the 2020 vision, 2020 vision I was speaking of. She finally saw for her own freaking eyes, 2020 vision to see that I had never done anything to, to my grandma to, to harm her in any type of way. When I was growing up, not only did she cut off my hair when I was a kid, but when I became like, you know, a preteen, maybe like 12, 13 years old, um, she was very controlling. She was, you know, forcefully making me um, be in all these church activities and things like that. And um, around that time, she started to fall on the floor. She would fall by herself on the floor and she would call my aunts and tell them that I pushed her. And I would cry and tell them that I didn't push her and I didn't do anything to her. And instead of um, listening to me, they put me as a child in a mental hospital. Um, not only did they put me in a mental hospital, but they um, put me in boot camp. I know you guys know the boot camp program. They put me in boot camp. So I was in boot camp with a whole bunch of badass kids. Let's be honest. These were kids who literally were making bad choices in their life. You know, they were doing, you know, I had a the girl that slept next to me that I remember, she was in there because she was hooked on crystal meth and she was a teenager and she couldn't stop doing crystal meth. And that's why she was there. I was in a room full of people that were dealing with things that I had never even understood. I never understood anything about drugs. I never understood those things. So this is to show you guys that my mindset was childlike and I was being controlled by a whole bunch of demons. And um, when I went through that situation where my aunt saw my grandmother's, you know, trying to pretend like she was going to fall. And the reason she was going to pretend to fall was because she was going to tell everyone, hey, guess who came to visit me? 
the granddaughter I raised that never comes to see me. And guess what? She brought my daughter with her and my daughter actually has empathy for her. Her The reason my grandmother was upset was because my aunt had empathy for me. And they didn't. They wanted me to be alone. They didn't want me to have family. They wanted to keep me disowned by everyone. So in that moment, my aunt was able to get twenty twenty vision to see what she was doing. And after that situation, I told her, "You believe me now, huh?" And you could see it in her eyes that she was disappointed, and she felt bad, and she said she was sorry because she wasn't aware. And I told her. I understand, you know, that we're friends right now and that you're there for me just as I'm there for you. But I need you to understand that at one point you were just like them. You were just like them. You didn't want to see my side of the story. You didn't care to know my side of the story. You didn't have empathy towards your niece. You didn't want to talk to me. You didn't want to see why it is that they cut my hair. You never defended me. You watched them put me in boot camp. You watched them put me in this this mental hospital on my birthday. On my birthday. On my birthday as a 13-year-old. When I became a 13-year-old and I remember because I remember being a preteen saying, oh, I'm going to be 13. I'm finally going to be a teenager. That means I was still thinking like a kid for me to be happy to finally be a teenager. But the people around me were so wicked, she couldn't even see. She didn't have eyes to see, you guys. She didn't have eyes to see because she was just like them. So what I'm saying with this message is that as we're going into the year 2020, we are going into a year of perfect vision. We are going into a year of light where people will see the light in others. Um, You know, after my my aunt seeing what I went through, guess, you know, guess what happened after that? She went through the stage that we all have to go through when we deal with narcissism. The realization that these people aren't who they say they are. That hit had to hit her first because she was shocked that she did it to her. I think a part of her didn't empathize towards me because I'm the granddaughter, you know? But she doesn't, it's, it's hard for her to understand that because this person raised me, I don't know anything about a mom and dad. I don't know anything about a mom and dad. All I know is your mother, which is my grandmother, which is your mother. That's all I know. But I guess because I'm the granddaughter, no one empathized towards me because they're looking at it as if this is my mom. You know, I have to be protective over my mom. You're just the granddaughter. If you don't like my mom, get the F away from here. That was their attitude. So after that situation, they had eyes to see that I was never lying about what my grandma was doing to me, the mental abuse, the gaslighting. And after dealing with that and her awakening, she still did not want to stop the communication with my grandmother. You know what she kept doing? She kept going around. She kept um, forgiving, being forgiving of the narcissist. But with narcissists, you have to, um, in order to for them to change or try to change or for them to see that what they did was wrong, you have to leave them alone. Or else they're going to think, oh, I didn't do anything wrong because you still keep coming around me. She didn't want to stop. She didn't want to stop coming around her family. And she was wondering why bad things kept happening to her. And I told her and she didn't listen to me. So guess what? I'm only here to plant the seed. I'm not here to deal with people back and forth. I'm here to plant the seed. And when I planted that seed, she was never taken back by the family the same way again. People started turning her into the black sheep now. So I went from being the black sheep to now it was her. Not only was it her... But even my own cousins turned on my aunt and even my own cousins turned on my aunt. Why? Because of their own parents, which are 
my aunt's sisters and brothers. So even with my my cousin, when I was 15 years old, um, he came from New York. He came from another state. Um, and my family is Catholic. And if you're not Catholic, it's like uh, it was nice knowing you. So when my cousin came from New York, he wasn't accepted by the family because he changed religions. So when he came, I was only 15 years old and I, I was the only one who talked to him because I, I I said to myself, when my cousin left to New York, we all got along with him. Just because he's from another religion, I'm not going to stop talking to my cousin. Like, that's stupid. So when he came back, even though he was older than me, I was only 15, I, I had it in me where... I didn't see him different because of the religion. I didn't see why everyone was treating him different because I didn't know they were narcissists. They're religious narcissists. So when my cousin comes back, he starts to preach to me and I start going to his church. The moment I do that, my family at this point, they don't want anything to do with me. And I'm only 15 years old. They don't want anything to do with me. So I put my trust into my cousin who's older than me to take care of me, right? But instead, what ends up happening is my cousin's taking me to this church. And one day he decides he doesn't want to go to this church anymore. So I stopped going to the church because I understood why he stopped going. I understood why he stopped going. I understood. And I wasn't angry that he brainwashed me for a second because I had been brainwashed my whole life. So to me, it was like, okay, I can forgive you. I can understand why you're upset. And I'm not going to go to that church anymore either. I'm searching for God at this point. I'm only 15, searching for God, searching for answers, searching for the wise. And instead of my cousin being there for me, you know what he does? He goes into the family and he talks bad about me, a 15-year-old. And you know what the family does? They welcome him back with open arms. And guess what he does? He starts to play his position as a fake Catholic person just to be accepted. So he leaves me to become a narcissist with his family. He played like he was like he had empathy, but he actually went and, and turned on me to make himself look good. And he's older than me. I'm only 15 and he was almost 30 years old at that time. Now, years later, he's calling my aunt, the same person I woke up and I told, now they have 20-20 vision, you know, He's telling her how the family has treated him and how they're gaslighting him right now. They're gaslighting him. And you know why it is? Because I was the black sheep. I was no longer there. My aunt became the black sheep. She's no longer there. And what goes around comes around. And what my cousin did to me it was bound to come around again to test him out. Remember, I told you guys, life is a test. He got tested. Now he's crying, talking about the family and how he's been gaslighted. And the moment my aunt told me that he told her that the family is gaslighting him, you know what my first thought was? He's learned about narcissism. For anyone to say that someone is gaslighting them, they had to have a moment where they broke down and they wanted answers. And that is exactly what he got was answers. I've gotten these answers from a young age. I had to go through this as a freaking seven, eight year old, 14 year old. And these people are barely waking up. They're barely waking up. I'm an adult now, but I've been able to grasp 
all this knowledge and work with it the best way that I can. So guess what, you guys? Guess what? I'm going to tell you guys this last message before I leave. And that is with you guys understanding what I've been through in my uh, some of my story um, and the 2020 vision that these people have slowly gotten, you know, um, and going into the year of 2020 and karma. These people did not want to see that what they were doing was pure demonic and evil until it happened to them. And you know what I told my aunt? I told her, the only thing that's going to happen from now on is that they're going to find the next person to gaslight and to, to make the black sheep. Either they're going to kick everyone out of that family dynamic that... um people who are good or you're going to be forced to leave because once you start questioning anything you will become the next target that's just how it is if you question anything that does not make sense out of these people's mouths you will be the next target so at the end all these evil people end up being with each other in one. And usually the person that's holding that glue together, which is, in my case, my grandmother, when she dies, these evil people are going to destroy each other with their own selfish greed and evilness um, and their materialistic mentality. They're going to be fighting over... Um, real estate properties they're going to be fighting over all these things and I've already called it out before it happens and they're going to destroy themselves with their own hate manifesting diseases which they they they're doing right now you know I've told you guys about my aunt that got cancer and she lied and said I hit her when I never even touched this woman and she ended up with cancer and then the people that were gaslighting me um, that were around her, one of them is waiting for her, her results because she thinks she has cancer too. These people are cancerous people and it takes them to go through the, their own disease that they're causing to themselves for them to finally wake up and realize what, who they have wronged and how they have treated others. They literally have to go through the same things they've put others through for them to finally kind of get an idea of what they've put others through. But by then, it's too late. It's too late. You know, even for the narcissist that we have been with in relationships, when they move on, it's too late. They can't ever come back. It, it's never the same. It's everything. Time changes. People change. We grow. But your karma is still your karma. And until that happens to them, you know, they live in this delusion. Until that happens to them, they wake up. And guess what? Some of them wake up and go back to sleep. They wake up and they, they want empathy from people. And as soon as their life gets back on track, they go back to sleep. So my advice to everyone is to stay awake. Stay awake because you can all be a victim of feeling hate and greed and emptiness in you based on what you've been through and um, the circumstances that you were forced into. And, um, the, you know, like me, I was forced into this family. I was forced into having this childhood. I was forced into um, having these relationships until I finally um, got out. Like the Get Out movie, I finally got out and I was able to be present within my own dream and understand the dream and understand that I have to have a dream, a goal, a vision. And it's OK to um, do it alone because we're, you know, we're always going to be one. We're always going to be one within ourselves, you know, it, our life, everything. It, it's we're eternal we're everlasting, our energies never die. So um, with that being said, you guys, um, I hope that you guys were able to 
understand a little bit more about the 2020 vision, the changes that our society is coming into, um, you know, and the dynamic of narcissism and how these people destroy themselves in the end. And that is why we cannot sit in a oppression and wait until they get their karma. You just have to know that that's what's going to happen. I've been knowing what was going to happen within my own family for years. I literally knew what was going to happen, who was going to become the black sheep next, who was going to be the next one, because the kinder you are, the weaker they think you are. So I had already called out the people that I knew, you know, had empathy in themselves, but were controlled by the hate and the greed that was around them, just as I was, you know, and just as my aunt didn't feel no empathy towards me, it took her to go through those situations to, for her to finally understand, you know, and by the time these narcissists, um, people that you're in a relationship with understand, you know, even have the slightest clue, you know, they might not ever feel what you feel, but when they finally understand at least what they did to you, it will be too late. You know, and this is why you have to keep going and you have to keep living your life. Because trust me, when you look in that rear view mirror, these people are going to be either in the same situation or even worse. Most of these narcissist men, just from a woman's perspective, are, you know, they want to, they have issues. They have mommy issues. They have daddy issues. These people have problems, you guys. And you are you you didn't bring them into this world for them to hate you. You didn't do that to them. So give yourself some respect and let these people go so that you can work on yourselves and um, enjoy the rest of your 2020, you know, understanding and having the eyes to see. So I'll talk to you guys on the next one. Bye.